Alright, so today I want to go over a practical skill, static line ascension using Prusik knots. And what we're trying to do here is keep the gear that we need to do this to an absolute minimum. Yes, I do have a bunch of gear here, but uh, what we're actually going to be using are the bare minimum that you can carry in a pack on your day trips, on overnight trips, long trips, it doesn't matter. So what you need here are three lengths of three meter, one inch tube nylon. One will be a harness for yourself. The second will be a harness for your partner. The third will be a chest harness, an anchor point, or if need be a harness for a third person. Now here I've got Jumars and I'm gonna be using them to show how to ascend the fixed line and they are quite useful you can do many many things with uh, with Jumars but what we're going to be doing is using Prusik knots to achieve the same as the mechanical devices uh, you will need locking carabiners these are fancy French magnetic ones with balls and magnets um, and uh, pulleys always help especially if you're having to do any sort of uh, hauling. And a figure eight, which is very light for repelling, and an ATC for belaying and ascending. So for the Prusik, we're starting with a fairly short length of rope. This is gold line. It needs to be a smaller diameter than the line that it is being used to climb. Here I'm creating a fisherman's knot, which is two to three knots wrapped around and then wrapped back, back through itself. And then you do the same with the opposite end, two loops wrapping in the reverse direction. There's lots of videos on how to do fisherman's knots. and back through itself, dress the knot, and pull the two knots against themselves. Okay, so this creates a very strong loop, and we use this as a Prusik. Okay, so for the emergency harness, we are splitting the webbed tube uh, the one inch web tubing down the middle so we're starting the halfway mark and we're wrapping one leg as high up the inner thigh as is possible tightening that off and then doing the same for the other side now once you tie this you will need to untie it dress it and retie it again because there will be slack but you can ratchet it as tight as you can the first time don't get too excited ladies and uh, tie it off to the side again you will want to retie this after you've worn it for some time your locking carabiner the largest that you can find down and out carabiners always down and out that's the rule should always be down and out ATC for the belay and I attach the figure eight to a separate locking carabiner speaking of figure eights we're making a figure eight knot which is very simple to tie very strong and it comes undone very easily very easy to inspect it should look like a figure eight and tied off with a an overhand attach the figure eight to the carabiner 
inspect it, triple check it, make sure that it's tight. Tie yourself to the anchor point. Make sure that your anchor point runs freely and inspect it again. Create a bite in the running end of the static line or the climbing line through the ATC, through the carabiner, and this is your brake. Very important to have gloves when you're braking. Mechanics impact gloves, they work for firefights, they work for belaying and repelling because you can wear right through them, not your fingers. You don't want to burn your hands and you want to have total control over the belay device, right? So simple, we've got a locking carabiner for you, a locking carabiner for your partner, a, an ATC, the harnesses and the rope. Once we've found our position, we can tie ourselves off by a simple bite through the anchor point. So now I'm just going to display the technique for climbing the static line using the Jumars. And we're gonna mimic the Jumar ascending using Prusik knots. But for now, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to actually ascend a line using a set of Jumars. The upper Jumar attaches through a locking carabiner to your uh, main locking carabiner. And the second through a locking carabiner goes to a foot loop where you take the weight on your foot climb up the rope, move the upper Jumar, and ascend as you climb. Once you've reached the top, then you can disconnect. And so what we're gonna do is take the short length of line that we took before, the loop, or Prusik, and we're going to loop through itself at least twice. If you need more friction on the line, if it's wet, you can do uh, three loops through. Uh, I think here I've done three, but uh, two should suffice. Dress the knot, make sure that none of the lines are overlapping, tighten it, and you have a Prusik. You can slide the Prusik in one direction, take the weight, and it will lock in place. Okay, we're gonna do the next with the lower Prusik, which is going to your foot loop. Again, wrapping the line, the loop through itself at least twice, possibly three times, dressing the knot, ensuring that you're catching friction and attaching it to the leg loop. Now with the leg loop, you can have a step configuration where you have, you know, two to three holes or loops that you can put your foot through. That way you can adjust the height of your stance uh, as, as required. So here you can see that my leg is taking the entire weight of the system and I would be sliding the Prusik up or down, or in this case, releasing the Prusik completely once I reach the top of the pitch. Still with the weight taken on the lower leg loop, I am taking the slack up in the ATC, taking the weight on my harness and removing the Prusik. Once you've gotten to the top of the pitch, you take your reconnaissance photos as required. And then you can repel. And finally, don't do what I'm doing, stepping on the rope. Cardinal Sin have a ground sheet 
put your rope on the ground sheet uh, but uh, flaking so don't put coils in your rope I know everyone does it but if you flake your lines then you will not get the kinks and you can throw it off the edge of a cliff it will not get tangled and you will not uh, be experiencing a rat's nest with the lines so flake it left to right once you finish flaking the line you wrap it with a fairly long length of line pushing a bite through your handhold through to the other side wrapping the bite around itself around the head of the lines and pulling it tight as a disclaimer climbing is dangerous do so at your own risk anything that i am suggesting you do here you need to practice beforehand you need to make sure that your knots are triple checked have somebody else check your knots start at a very easy level no more than six feet off the ground make sure that you understand the systems but more importantly the use of the prusik knot or the jumar in conjunction with ropes allows you to get yourself out of many tricky situations uh, not just for climbing but for getting gear uh, across rivers getting vehicles out of ditches you know prusik knots are ha having just a couple of extra loops and a, a length of rope in your vehicle can save the day when nothing else will work experiment with prusiks experiment with the basic minimum gear and uh and go hiking and enjoy it but most of all maintain those perimeters <laughs>